we are going to be presenting exploration of uh, MIPI CSI2 over DeFi, uh, coupled with the various imaging system considerations. Uh, it, it is my honor to, to provide this presentation with uh, Rajkumar Nagpal. Uh, he's, he's been leading these efforts for advancing low power DeFi uh, energy solutions for camera and imaging for, for over a decade. Uh, and um, he's a principal engineer at Synopsys. He's chairing the MIPI DeFi working group. He's also chairing the FI steering group and co-chairing the AFI working group. I would also note that this week, uh, the CSI2 over DeFi imaging system considerations is going to be first of the three webinars we have scoped for this week. Uh, on, on Wednesday morning, Pacific time, we have the CSI2 over C5 webinar with George Wiley. And on Wednesday afternoon, Pacific time, uh, we have the uh, MIPI, uh, leveraging MIPI interfaces for realizing superior image quality with uh, Zhu Zhang's team uh, from, from Lenovo. Right, overview of, of CSI to key features uh, uh, would be, uh, would be the, the introduction and we will go deeper into specifically the DeFi low energy transport. So from MIPI Alliance perspective, uh, when we when we look at the alliance, it's a it's a collaborative organization comprising of around 400 member companies, and we started the CSI to developments uh, with the mobile phones, and and at, at present we are certainly expanding uh, developments for beyond mobile uh, product platforms. Uh, our our mission from MIPI is to provide uh, hardware software interface specifications and uh, to create uh, innovative solutions and uh, uh, comprehensive provisions to ensure time to market needs uh, are, are met. Uh, this presentation would be focusing on MIPI CSI2. Uh, certainly within the umbrella of MIPI, there are multiple other interfaces uh, such as display, memory, storage, uh, for, for which standardized solutions are also, uh, also developed for systems. So when we zoom out and and we view the development of uh, MIPI CSI2 for for camera and imaging applications over the last uh, couple of decades, uh, there are there are three primary pillars uh, that that attributes to its um, uh, to its success. Uh, starting with uh, that, there is the covenant that was established between the primary sensor companies and application processor companies for uh, for defining the format and the protocols transporting the pixel array uh, data uh, from the sensor and, and processing the content within the application processor. Uh, second, uh, defining incredibly comprehensive and uh, uh, well, well understood uh, low energy transport for transporting the pixel, uh, the digital representations of the pixel uh, using various technologies uh, addressing various constraints. And again, in this webinar, we will focus on DeFi. Uh, and the third pillar uh, is, is our ability to come together as a collective and, and forecast and uh, properly articulate the emerging applications and, and use cases uh, that, that could be deployed on various uh, product platforms. From a, from a high level conceptual perspective, uh, what we see on the upper hand, uh, upper right hand side is, is an illustration of, of what a CSI to frame uh, uh, looks like. Uh, we have the packet header contain, uh, content in, in teal blue uh, that contains uh, mission critical uh, structures such as data type, uh, virtual channels that is protected by uh, error checking and correction or, or replication. In the CSI to over DeFi imaging systems, uh, we take the earlier. Uh, the error checking and correction is capable of identifying uh, two-bit errors, and uh, it's it's also capable of identifying and correcting a single-bit error. Uh, the dynamic long packet in, in Magenta is what we use to transport the digital representations of the of the pixel arrays, uh, and, um, and 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 it could vary. Uh, for instance, simultaneously we could be transporting. Uh, digital representations mapped to a raw frame, and at the same time transporting, uh, let's say, a compressed version of the frame 
uh, as well. Uh, embedded data is, is optional where we could send uh, pertinent data coming from the sensor, such as uh, say device ID or perhaps uh, the temperature of the sensor module. Um, and we would notice that, that we have a CRC uh, that is used to uh, protect um, the, the content of the what we, what we define as best effort transport comprising the dynamic long uh, packets and the embedded data. From a conduit perspective, MIPI CSI2 is also supported by the physical layer transport solutions such as A5, C5, D5, and I3C. Uh, functional safety and security provisions as provided by the camera service extension specification. Uh, provisions to or, or specifications to develop a unified imaging uh, software driver, including CCS, that stands for Camera Command Set and, and Disco for Imaging. And last but not least um, are, are the conformance test suite specifications. When we look at the evolution of CSI2, this slide uh, is, is relatively pivotal um, as, it, as it helped signal the broader ecosystem uh, at an inflection point of not only just looking at solutions that was, that was advantageous for mobile camera solutions or mobile camera systems, uh, but, but also going beyond mobile camera systems. And in this case, uh, it, is, it is very much targeting automotive product platforms. So here, the system engineering problem that we were taking on uh, was um, detecting uh, uh, traffic speed signs uh, under challenging lighting conditions uh, while leveraging uh, some of the hardware system uh, constraints uh, that, that were available uh, in, in some of the automotive uh, incubation systems. Uh, so here is, a, is, a, uh, is somewhat of a pathological case of a five degree slanted edge of a, of a street sign. And um, it is passed through various high intensity, medium intensity, low intensity uh, permutations crossed with high contrast, low contrast, medium contrast, in which various uh, modular transfer function response uh, was was gathered, and the and the intent behind all of this development is: could we reduce the amount of energy, amount of power, the amount of surges bandwidth that is needed for automotive vision systems, while at the same time preserving the edges to help detect the street signs? And so that is precisely what you know what we did as a collective by bringing in some some brilliant imaging scientists we developed a differential pulse code modulation uh, compression technique in which uh, when we, we capture the raw, uh, the raw image uh, here in using 12 bits per pixel. And in this example, uh, it goes through a compression of uh, 12 to 10 to 12, which means there's a 20% reduction in compression. And we are able to alleviate uh, a number of uh, crucial compression artifacts. So the end result is that we are able to now facilitate uh, various uh, vision capabilities while reducing the CERDES bandwidth or the CERDES network overheads uh, within automotive systems, uh, and at the same time uh, preserve uh, the, the, uh, the edges for, uh, devoid of uh, compression artifacts. So today, when we look at uh, the developments of, of MIPI CSI2 solutions, uh, it is very much spanning applications, not just for mobile, but certainly beyond mobile, you know, within the consumer sphere, uh, such as client product platforms, within commercial sphere, such as uh, surveillance for capturing abnormal behavior, using uh, smart region of interest and provisions for low power inferencing, and, and certainly in the broader infrastructure, uh, such as uh, uh, highway traffic monitoring uh, as well. So one of the key features, <clears throat> one of the core features rather of, of CSI2, uh, it, it is called latency reduction and transport efficiency. Uh, and and as, the, uh, as the abstracted illustration is depicting here, uh, it, it has two very important capabilities, right? So the first capability uh, is its ability to, uh, to, to facilitate a streaming solution a divide of uh, so many overheads. Uh, and so everything in the dotted circle, such as end of transmission, low power state, 
uh, startup transmission, uh, those are all replaced by a single uh, a single control code, which uh, which may or may not be phi generated and consumed as it is as it is the case in CFI, or it could just be a control code or or series of codes. Uh, and the intent is is to minimize the amount of uh, chronological duration one may spend uh, uh, in the in the delimiters transitioning from short packets to long packets, uh, or, or from long packets to long packets, or from long packets to short packets. Uh, the second advantage the LRT provides uh, is using something called um, uh, uh, ALP. Uh, which enables the system to uh, manifest an, uh, an interface solution uh, devoid of dual voltage signaling. Um, so the uh, intent behind the ALP would be to remove the need for uh, high voltage rails, uh, alleviate uh, transistor stacking ch challenges that we may have uh, within SOCs and, and the sensors. Another core feature that, that MIPI CSI to uh, conduit solutions provide uh, is is um, is a pathway to help reduce the power spectral density uh, across um, across the interface. Uh, on the left, uh, we see CSI2 over DeFi, and and this is specifically the DeFi forwarded clock mode solution, uh, in which um, a, a Galois field two to the sixteen, so using a two to the sixteen polynomial, uh, could could be used to. Uh, to reduce the emissions. And in this illustration, we have some pathological cases of like zero to one transitions or capturing a clear blue sky. And what we see in the, uh, in the deep shade of blue uh, uh, are the PST emission reduction benefits uh, from the uh, two to the 16 Galois field polynomial. Uh, it should be noted when it comes to the FCM uh, the scrambling benefits uh, are are deployed on the data lanes uh, and not necessarily the clock lanes. Uh, and what we see on the right is an example of CSI2 over CFI, where it, the scrambling would apply to the entirety of the link, mainly because it is you know it is an embedded clock and data solution. And and uh, this is noted here because as we transition from an FCM-based solution to an embedded clock mode solution. We may also have the possibility of perhaps uh, providing the link-based coverage uh, that is offered by scrambling uh, as, as, as the forward-looking DeFi developments could benefit from, uh, could certainly benefit from an embedded clock and mode solutions. Another key feature that, that was advanced quite recently is the multi-pixel compression. And and here it is it is leveraging all the goodness that we have uh, that we have developed over time using differential pulse code modulation, and and building on the DPCM MPC takes us to the next level. Uh, so at a very high level, uh, the the MPC uh, accounts for the fact, and it's 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 an empirical uh, empirically driven data, uh, which is there is a statistical probability that neighboring pixels. Uh, within a sensor module uh, are are going to be uh, capturing uh, 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 images that are or rather pixels that are that are going to be similar uh, and so using the statistical probability that that neighboring pixels are going to be similar uh, in conjunction with various other uh, encoding techniques uh, multi-pixel uh, compression uh, has uh, has has a has a clear uh, image quality benefit, uh, while at the same time providing a superior compression to, to that of the DPCM. As shown in this uh, uh, case study or this example, there were various scene analysis uh, that were conducted by var various image, uh, image scientists, uh, imaging scientists. And what we observed uh, is, that, uh, is that there is about a 14 dB peak signal to noise ratio advantage when we switch from a DPCM 10 to 6 compression to an MPC 10 to 5. Um, so as noted, in addition to delivering 20% more efficient uh, compression, we are also able to improve the image quality by, by 14 dB uh, at, at the systems level. Uh, 
Uh, it should also be noted that this is typically uh, mapped to the multi-pixel sensor solutions and architectures such as uh, Tetra cell and, and Nona cell. Right, so, so today when we take a look at the CSI2 conduit solutions, there are three very important low energy transport solutions. Uh, the first is the CSI2 over DeFi forwarded clock mode that is using a half rate periodic clock in which we are transporting the pixel data using differential lanes that is sampled at the rising edge and falling edge. Uh, simultaneously, a lot of the sensors today are also supporting uh, CSI2 over CFI in which three wires are used to transport 16 bits of data over, over seven toggles. Uh, and it is also possible uh, for, for MIPI CSI2 sensors today to support both of them as, as combo CFI and, and DeFi solutions. In this webinar, uh, we will be focusing on the CSI2 over DeFi, the solutions that exist today as, as FCM for water clock mode as illustrated here, and, and the emerging next generation uh, embedded clock mode solution. So I welcome Rajkumar to speak about the forwarded clock mode and the emerging embedded clock mode solution for imaging applications. When I started my career in MIPI 10 years back, I started with DeFi. And uh, there are a number of releases, versions of DeFi which have evolved over the time. And we have kept on improving the performance of DeFi in terms of data rate. And then other features which are needed to really support these data rates are actually uh, de you know, depicted here in this slide. So, so starting with the DeFi version 1.0, which was in 2009, DeFi has evolved uh, over the time now, starting with version 1.0 to now version 3.5. The data rate has gone from one gigabit per second to nine gigabit per second. And if I really see in this slide, I'm sharing up to version 3.0, which is all forwarded clock implementation. And it is starting with short channel and standard channel. Both the data rates are shown here, which is um, nine gigabit per second for standard channel and 11 gigabit per second for short channel. I'm talking of DeFi 3.0. It is supporting uh, basically a pre-emphasis transmitter is also having an equalization. Then there's a support for the skew calibration uh, we have added the, uh, you know, reference clock jitter, you know, qualification requirements because with the time it has, it is needed when you are increasing your data rate. Uh, receiver equalization is added only in a D53.0. In the previous versions, there is no receiver equalization. Uh, actually, we wanted to save the power, and uh, just to save your power, you you want to reduce your equalizers. Okay. And to further save the power, we started supporting unterminated modes, okay, wherein you don't have a receiver termination. So your you save the power. Then we started working on LVLP, which is basically low power, low voltage, because of our you know technology constraints going beyond one volt generally became a concern. So we reduced it a bit. Then we added alternate uh, low power mode just to really handle the long channels, which we call IoT channels. In general, you know, in alternate low power mode, you don't have LP and your more or less HS driver is working all along. And because of HS driver, you can handle longer channels because every channel is a transmission line, uh, not like a capacitive load in LP mode. So that's one thing we actually did. Then we started supporting, you know, 16-bit to 32-bit. Uh, basically, DeFi supports optical, you know, interconnect also. One can connect an optical. Um, there's a mechanism to really go to optical trans receiver. And uh, then DeFi is supporting high-speed reverse communication, which is quarter rate. Uh, DeFi supports um, HS idle, which is basically five generated and five detected delimiter. Uh, in all the forwarded clock implementations, fast turnaround is supported in DeFi and then DeFi supports a four meter channel. Uh, primarily, this is basically related to the channel quality also. And if you are using normal legacy LP, 
then you have to see the capsule loading offered by this channel. Eh? The length will be offered, will be actually limited by LP, not HS. And if you go to ALP, then there is no problem. For the um, protocol supported by DeFi are like here shown. And similarly for the display, these are the protocol supported. Next slide, please, Aaron. Okay, now moving from you know DeFi 3.0 to 3.5. By the way, in DeFi 3.5, we support founded clock mode as well as embedded clock mode. And the implementer can choose either of these two modes or can really choose both the modes. It is up to the implementer. Spec is not really prioritizing one over other. And by the way, this version is backward compatible. So DeFi is in general always backward compatible. Okay. So uh, you can use DeFi 3.5 FCM rule over versions. Uh, definitely DeFi ECM is just starting with DeFi 3.5. So it is not going to be compatible with the lower versions because the embedded clock mode does not exist. So basically in symbol rate uh, in the forwarded clock mode, it remained same as nine gigabit per second. And we brought in embedded clock mode in four, four bands. Actually there is one, three to six and there are two six to nine so there are four bands and you have to configure your device to operate in a given band okay and it is supporting uh, basically short channel and um, there's no problem pre-emphasis is there calibration is not required in the embedded clock mode okay anyway it is written so jitter spec is embedded receiver equalization is there Unterminated mode is not supported in embedded clock mode. It is always supported in forwarded clock mode. LVLP is supported. Alternate LP mode is optional and it is not supported in embedded clock mode. Okay. And the bus width is 16 bit or 32 bit. Uh, optical interconnect is supported. High speed reverse mode is supported and uh, HS idle is not supported in the embedded clock mode. Fast bus turnaround is not supported in embedded. It is supported with forwarded clock mode and um, IoT channel is supported in all the configurations. So this is basically how DeFi has evolved over the time. And from we are now moving from forwarded clock to embedded clock. And forwarded clock remains backward compatible. And if somebody is implementing both forwarded and embedded, this particular spec can act as a bridge moving forward, okay? So in fact, you can use, use this device as a bridge between forwarded clock and embedded clock. So next slide, please. Okay, this basically slide gives you a big bit, bit of block diagram, a representation of the internal building blocks of uh, the one trans receiver, basically LP, HSTX, then um, ELP, mode then hs receiver then lp receiver and you know contention detection this is basically analog block on the digital this is the one implementation and basically as a very top level forwarded clock mode is our legacy DeFi, and it is very simple to implement it was it is just like very simple like um, there's not much of the complexity involved uh, it meets up to nine gigabit per second data rate requirement, bus turnaround is supported. It is basically a half duplex configuration, okay? So it is at a time either forward or reverse, not full duplex, it is half duplex. Uh, supports both short and long channel. It's a standard LP interface, ELP is optional, differential signaling is there. Is there. With the differential signaling, you get better you know, EMC uh, you know, constraints and high speed reverse quarter rate is supported. This is our standard forwarded clock implementation specification. And then in embedded clock is basically evolving over the forwarded clock. Basically this is needed because if we have to increase the data rate beyond nine gigabit per second, because of you know channel jitter amplification um, constraints, we cannot go beyond nine gigabit per second in a forwarded clock configuration. And that is the reason we are moving to embedded clock because we want to increase the per lane data rate. So per lane data rate will be increased with embedded clock. And it's another advantage with embedded clock is that it's EMC performance 
is going to improve. There will be less, you know, PSD constraints. Additional data lane is going to be available. Now clock lane is can be used as a data lane. So instead of uh, four lanes in a 10-bit implementation, now you have five lanes. All five lanes are working. Overall improves throughput. Data rate enhancement is possible. Now we are going to take it to 16 gigabit per second in D5 4.0. And we are basically working on adding additional lossy channels moving forward, okay? Because now ISI can be better handled. There's no constraint of future amplification. We can actually put a better equalizers to handle longer channels. Now we are actually putting an encoder 128, 132 bit just to get you better, you know, CID requirements for your CDR to operate. And then now only two wires. Uh, implementation is possible both for camera and display interfaces because there is no clock lane requirement. And um, I think um, each lane is now independent. You can put camera to each lane. So every lane is independent. And uh, so you can use more sensors in DeFi in a given number of lanes. Yeah, thank you, Rajkumar. Like I, I must say that every time I, I look at all the cool stuff uh, Rajkumar and his team are developing, it's almost like black magic, and it just it just works. Uh, right. So here we have CSI two over DeFi FCM low energy pixel transport. Now imagine imagine you are a product planner and you have to define what the camera configurations that are needed on an application processor or an SOC. Uh, and and this, is, this becomes uh, a very interesting, uh, interesting exercise in itself. And perhaps what in this example, what we are defining is, 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 is a need for three camera modules or three camera sensors uh, in which we have a by four, implying it's a four lane uh, MIPI D5 FCM camera sensor uh, and, a, and a by two or a two lane a sensor and a by one sensor. And if we were to define this as a requirement, uh, then from an SOC perspective, uh, 20 high speed IO pins would be needed uh, because a by four D5 FCM requires 10 pins, a by two will require six pins, and by one would require uh, four pins. Right. So as, as Rajkumar mentioned earlier, the standard channel rate is nine gigabits per second uh, per lane. And uh, for short uh, channel, it is 11 gigabits per second. Now, the benefit I think uh, we all get to see with, with what Raj is working on, uh, transitioning from an FCM signaling to an ECM, um, it, it is quite profound and consequential for, for DeFi-based uh, imaging systems. Uh, and, uh, the, the low-hanging um, low fruit, uh, or perhaps uh, at the first order, uh, we again see the previous system diagram in salmon pink here. It's an SOCA FCM. And the moment we transition from an FCM solution to an ECM, the, the initial benefit, it's, 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 uh, it, is, it should be quite, uh, quite evident, uh, supporting the by four, by two, by one camera sensors, we are going to be able to save six high-speed IO pins from an SOC. And that is, that is quite substantial. It's a 30% reduction in the high-speed I.O. pins for this configuration, right? Um, the the second, uh, so second added benefit uh, for uh, in, in transitioning from FCM to ECM uh, is, is, the, is the ability to now facilitate permutations beyond what an FCM solution would have enabled us to do. Uh, right, so so when we think about uh, developing an SOC, typically the runway is about you know about say two to two to four years, and the product deployments uh, of that SOC on platforms and and supporting various uh, applications and use cases that may require different camera sensor configurations could be another you know five six years. So when we think about uh, projecting all of the applications that may be that may be required, uh, requiring various configurations on a on an SOC, uh, it it becomes relatively fuzzy the further we project 
uh, out in the in the chronological time frame. And so that is a challenge with FCM because a definition of a camera port is intrinsically tied to the clock lanes, right? The clock lane would essentially define uh, how many ports or how many camera sensors we could support. In the SOC A FCM, we have three cameras and that's all we can, we can support. Transitioning to you know, what Rajkumar was describing earlier from FCM to ECM, from an imaging system perspective, the definition of a clock port is no longer tied to the physical, the physically frozen clock lanes. Uh, a definition of a camera port uh, is, is now dynamic. It's, it's uh, from a micro architecture perspective, it's going to be tied to uh, lane DSQ mechanisms, which means from a, the SOCB ECM, which is on the, on the right side, it is able to support a whole gamut or rather a whole uh, series and permutations of, of camera sensors, not just the by four, by two, by one, but perhaps in some pathological cases, we could have you know 10 by one sensors. If that's what's needed, it can be supported. Uh, or perhaps uh, there are high performance depth perception re requiring dual by four and, and perhaps a dual by one uh, is required and that can indeed be supported. Rajkumar also touched on uh, how uh, having the embedded clock and data uh, may also help um, uh, uh, alleviate emissions and, and quite specifically with the FCM uh, on the on broad range of systems, the forwarded half rate periodic clock uh, quite often comes up as 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 one of the worst emissions aggressor, uh, and and more more often than not, solutions may use spread spectrum clocking to 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 disperse that energy. However, when we transition from FCM to ECM, uh, we no longer have uh, to uh, we, we no longer have that 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 forwarded periodic clock anymore, mainly because it's all again integrated with the data uh, in the in the lanes. Right, so. Certainly, uh, uh, there, there, are, there are a number of benefits we see uh, in, in transitioning from FCM to ECM for, uh, for, for, uh, for imaging systems. Another key feature that, that CSI2 uh, supports and, and is, is, is presently uh, being updated uh, is the unified serial link encapsulated transport. And the motivation here is to help address you know, one of the key holy grails of, of interface evolutions, which is reducing wire by, by encapsulating the control data with the pixel payload data, um, as well as facilitating replay protection for uh, sophisticated smart camera sensor modules that may require comprehensive firmware updates, as, as well as, of course, the periodic 3A updates. Uh, as well as uh, using inheritance uh, as much as possible to leverage the existing IP solutions. So one of the one of the platforms that we are uh, spending uh, considerable time with the member companies' inputs um, is exploring the pathways of of evolving the mobile-based solutions for client product platforms. So in here. Uh, the DeFi ECM uh, solutions um, or, or developments or signaling transport uh, Rajkumar presented earlier um, could be used, used in a, a broad range of client product platforms, right? So on the left, we have uh, the typical uh, camera module. Uh, and here it is architecture A and architecture B. Uh, we refer to them as transitionary solutions, mainly because they are using you are existing off the shelf CSI2 over C5 and D5 camera sensors. These are the, the legacy existing you know, D5, FCM, or C5, 16B7 as uh, transport solutions. It's coupled to a translator bridge, uh, which is then, uh, uh, so the, on the ingress port, we have the legacy IPs uh, for C5 and D5. And on the egress port of the translator bridge, we have the D5 ECM on the camera module. It's a two-wire solution for architecture A. We are transporting the raw frames uh, to the application processor, uh, which would have the D5 ECM uh, as well. In, in this case, it's a receiver. Uh, and, the, uh, and, and, and the advent of the embedded clock and data 
uh, may enable uh, supporting longer reach uh, using only two wires, uh, help alleviate some of the hinge opening routing constraints uh, that, that may be present on, on client product platforms. There is also the added benefit by combining architecture A and architecture B. And architecture B, the difference is uh, the architecture B translator bridge has an integrated ISP. Uh, by combining architectures A and B, uh, we, we could also provide this as, as a consideration for client system integrators who are looking for uh, a seamless, uh, standardized conduit across uh, entry segment, uh, mainstream and premium segment chassis uh, that could just benefit from a unified two wire conduit solution. Taking the prior architectures A and B, and as we project forward in time with the possibility of native sensor integration, that results in essentially architectures C and D. Uh, and, and the reason we are putting this forward is, you know, one of the signature DNAs that we have within MIPI when we develop the FIES uh, is, is, there, is the FIES ability to, to be natively integrated into sensors by ensuring uh, from, a, from an energy dissipation perspective from the transmitter, the, the channel, as well as the receiver, uh, we are developing an incredibly uh, com um, comprehensive solution for native integration considerations. So taking the prior architecture A, uh, and, and if we were to remove the bridge and translator solutions as a, as a means of cost reduction, uh, perhaps uh, alleviating thermal constraints, package constraints, that results in architecture C. And similarly, uh, taking the prior architecture B, and if we were to explore a completely integrated solution, that would result in architecture D. So I welcome Raj Kumar to talk about the present explorations on ECM targeting imaging applications. Thanks, Haran. And uh, I love the way you presented the things and uh, you made the things very clear to everybody. And I appreciate it. Okay, great. So now we're going for D5 4.0. Actually, D5 4.0 is bringing in a lot of new things, and I'm going to speak about them a little bit here. So first, we are moving from 9 gigabit per second to 16 gigabit per second in the embedded clock mode. Okay, there's no change in folded clock mode. D5 4.0 uh, will hold like folded clock mode as it is you can always implement it, but the embedded clock mode will be going up to 16 gigabit per second. And uh, this uh, particular file is going to support both DC coupled and EC coupled mode. And by the way, you see D5 today is DC coupled. EC coupling is needed because, you know, some of the industrial needs are there wherein you don't want to really get, you know, limited by the common mode. And if you don't want common mode, you have to do EC coupling. So this EC coupling feature is brought into the file to really remove the need of uh, you know common mode requirements while interfacing. Okay. And uh, with the uh, EC coupling, definitely you will have some ELP kind of features which will be limited in functionality, primarily supporting ULP state. More things will come when we go into the feasibility study, but uh, both coupling will be supported. Another support which we look forward to is multi-drop repeater approach, wherein a uh, daisy chain, you know, camera or displays can be connected in a daisy chain fashion, and you can use the common interconnect while communicating with the uh, EC. So this is one feature which we are looking at. Uh, further, we are increasing the PPI bus width to 64 bit as we have moved from 9 to 16. Definitely, your par parallel parallel bus you know speed will increase. So we just want to keep it reasonably manageable, like some of the prototypings people do on FPGAs. So we we are providing the 64 bit bus width also as an option. It will remain backward compatible to existing D5 3.5. Uh, that is what is our target. Okay, next slide, please.
okay <clears throat> now basically if you really look at d5 3.5 in the embedded clock mode we don't support keep, keep alive but moving forward in d5 4.0 we are going to support keep alive option in the embedded clock mode it is more like a alternative of hsidl in dc coupled mode uh, in ac coupled mode we are going to provide you some buffer uh, basically it will be a packet defined packet which will transmit between the two data packets as a as a keep alive so that your cdr is able to work and um, that is what is our plan we, we are going to support optical support will be there as it is uh, equalizers will be there both uh, maybe ctle and dfe will be there depending upon your channel length you may choose the taps of the dfe uh, ctle will be well defined okay receiver sensitivity we are decreasing from 40 millivolt to 20 millivolt uh, this is basically one of the reason is that uh, you, with longer channels, your real signal available will be less. And to save power, you don't want to amplify too much. Okay. So basically, nowadays, the standards are generally working at 20 millivolt. And D5 from legacy point of view was 40 millivolt at the receiver. Uh, by the way, for the data rates, 9 gigabit and below we will still support 40 millivolt because of backward compatibility but moving forward we will really recommend 20 millivolt as the requirement okay at the receiver input so receiver cdr will be supporting self-generated clock uh, i may say there will be a receiver supported clock so far in d5 3.5 uh, our cdr is actually getting clock from the input signal. There is no clock source at the receiver. But uh, in D5 4.0, we are going to support the CTR architecture wherein there will be a self clock on the receiver. Okay, So that portion we are going to support. And basically, we call it asynchronous clocking. Uh, there will be new channels which we are going to support. Basically, primarily, they are going to be a little bit longer channels supported. And uh, that will come because of some you know, new client applications. Uh, system, it will remain half duplex. Okay, Even in ECM mode, we'll support half duplex. We are going to support both DC and AC coupled mode. Okay, So that's where DeFi is going to be. Primarily, if you look, DeFi is now going to have everything. So there are too many features which we are adding in DeFi 4.0. Uh, thank you. This is uh, this is uh, as always. I'm I'm fascinated by how DeFi continues to evolve and and remains ahead of the S curve for various uh, requirements coming from the imaging imaging sector. Uh, so yeah, in, in summary, <clears throat> uh, CSI two we, we have a twenty years pedigree worth of knowledge and and various tribal knowledge uh, that we are currently deploying. On, on this ECM solution that, that Raj Kumar is uh, helping to lead and advance for camera and uh, camera and imaging applications. Uh, we have the first mover advantage with the smartphones and we are continuing to develop solutions for beyond mobile platforms. As, as alluded to earlier, uh, client product platforms, robotics, automotive are, are some of these uh, platforms or, or architectures we are presently discussing with various member companies. Uh, leveraging the established uh, infrastructure, uh, the CSI2 over DeFi uh, solutions, um, uh, it is already used today, specifically the FCM signaling. And uh, we continue to evolve this conduit uh, to support the, the DeFi embedded clock mode signaling, which is currently work in process. There is a MIPI camera interest group uh, which is open to both adopters as well as uh, contributors. And, um, and it is presently exploring various uh, system architecture solutions uh, under the umbrella of embedded as well as non-embedded applications uh, using CSI2 over DeFi ECM. Uh, so very much encourage uh, you know, members from your engineering teams uh, to, uh, to, to participate in the, in the, in the bi-weekly calls. Core features and capabilities um, it, it, that we discussed today 
include um, the differential pulse code modulation for things like edge, reten edge retention uh, and, and reducing the overall uh, automotive facilities uh, bandwidth requirements, latency reduction transport efficiency to facilitate broader uh, sensor integration, as well as um, facilitating uh, a single voltage transmission, scrambling to minimize PSD, power spectral density emissions, uh, multi-pixel compression that, that is an evolved solution from DPCM, uh, leveraging tetra cell, non cell type sensors uh, to, to deliver superior uh, image quality. Unified serial link to reduce the number of wires uh, that we have on, on MIPI imaging conduit solutions. Uh, that those are some feature, core features that we discussed today. On, on Wednesday's presentation with George Wiley, which is the second webinar uh, of the series, uh, we will also uh, discuss the smart region of interest and always on Sentinel conduit provisions. Uh, qu queries from uh, you or your engineering teams could be sent to cig at mipi.org. So with that, um, again, Rajkumar, I would welcome you to come on the stage and uh, perhaps we can address some of the questions um, from, from the audience. Um, so I have <clears throat> I have a couple of questions, Rajkumar. Uh, the first is, uh, let me see here. From, from the bandwidth perspective, you know, we continue to see need for higher and higher bandwidth as the sense of performance uh, keep on increasing. How does the ECM signaling help improve the increasing bandwidth requirements of the next gen high performance camera sensors? Okay, thanks uh, Haran. So this is a very good question, frankly. So there are two approaches which we are adopting moving forward in ECM. One is that uh, we are producing, uh, actually we are using clock lane as data lane. So one is your throughput is increasing. And another option is that uh, with, the, with the removal of clock lane and everything becoming embedded clock and there's no constraint of jet amplification, data rate is also growing from nine gigabit to 16 gigabit. So ECM is actually helping in both the ways to really meet the growing sensor requirements for higher bandwidth. Oh, that's, that's well said, Rajkumar. So I, I guess we could also say that one of the benefits of the increased bandwidth that ECM is going to deliver, that may also put forward the possibility of reducing the number of wires that's from, from FCM to ECM. Interesting. So we have a question from Ethan. Um, so the question from Ethan is, uh, how, how soon will DeFi ECM go into real products, market, and drive sensor ISP vendors to adopt? Do you see how much percentage of BOM or bill of material cost savings with a two-wire DeFi ECM? So those are two questions, Rajkumar. So basically, if you really see DeFi spec development plan is quarter one, 2025. 20, okay, so it is... Maybe you can say beginning of 2025, we will have the spec from the DeFi for that, for that option. Now, the another question is basically the BOM. You know, BOM implementation first is that anyway, you are actually reducing your uh, clock lane requirement. So BOM wise, um, you can use lesser number of lanes to achieve the same throughput. So with a lesser number of lanes, your area on the implementing, you know, platform will reduce. So that is one advantage I can see here. And um, other things in terms of bomb, maybe if you really ask me specifically, which which area like bomb is really, I will say that only area on the board and package will reduce this. I can reply you offhand. For more, I need to think. This is where I am today. If you want, give me time, I can spend more time. But really, the camera to sensor implementation bomb is actually basically just an interconnect environment as today. 
So interconnect requirement is going to reduce uh, because there is no clock lane requirement. And then you will have less shielding requirement also because there is no clock, there is no PST concerns. So basically area on the package and board will reduce. That's all I, what I see today. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Rajkumar. That's 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 very well put. Uh, seen from various uh, various perspectives. Um, so yeah, for Ethan and other members, I, I would also note that that we have a, a relatively detailed uh, bomb assessments with regards to wire counts from a couple of member companies that was submitted uh, in in CIG, Rajkumar, and on the. On the 4th of December, uh, there is going to be, uh, again, a detailed analysis of the, the wire reduction benefits of the MIPI 2 wire solution like, like ECM, uh, along with other fire transport uh, solution considerations and the various trades off um, that's going to be presented by a couple of, um, couple of engineering teams on the December 4th CIG call uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, well said. Um, another question, Rajkumar, I, I think this this perhaps I came up, uh, we, we, we may have touched a bit on this. Uh, it has a lot to do with the FCM's half rate periodic clock and, and how ECM, by dropping the need for the half rate periodic clock, there may be considerable benefits from an electromagnetic emissions perspective. Um, how, how does the ECM signaling solution uh, help improve electromagnetic emissions compatibility compatibility requirements on uh, imaging systems. Okay, so I think maybe Haran, this question is already the basis of really one of the reason of going to ECM. Actually, there are two reasons to go to ECM. One is basically you want to reduce your electromagnetic emission, and then another reason is that uh, uh, you want to really go to higher data rates. So jitter amplification is one. So, and then maybe third reason is higher throughput. So basically when you don't have a clock lane, you don't have a periodic spur in the emitted electromagnetic spectrum due to the clock Nyquist clock rate. So that spur will be not present in the, in the PSD analysis. And this is going to help you to really uh, place the lanes closer to your active blocks. So your overall you know, package enclosure is going to be smaller. And, um, and basically there is another advantage with ECM is it is having 128, 132 encoding. So in a way, it is going to be spur are going to be a little bit random in nature. So anyway, it is going to help you in the overall emission spectrum of the um, uh, system. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Rajkumar. That that was that was very helpful. Um, again, uh, I would encourage members if you have any additional follow up questions for Rajkumar and, and the rest of the member uh, members who are working on the CSI to our DeFi ECM to send you a queries to CIG at BP.org. Um, I would also note that uh, Today's webinar uh, is, is the first of the three webinars. Uh, we have the second one, which, uh, which is going to be MIPI CSI to our C5 with George Wiley on Wednesday morning Pacific time. And the last webinar would be on Wednesday afternoon with uh, Su Zhang Yang's team uh, on, on improving image quality for ThinkPad laptops on Wednesday afternoon. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Raj Kumar, for uh, helping to advance uh, one of the most uh, uh, successful and highly compelling uh, phi transport solutions for broad range of imaging applications. And uh, you did a great presentation, and organizing this uh, whole you know event is very good. And thank you very much. Good. Bye, everyone.